Hotter Than Health podcast, a plant-dominant podcast for those looking to expand and elevate their lives. Each week, we will bring you provocative conversations and topics, entertaining interviews, and some of the biggest names in health and wellness to answer your burning questions. You will leave each episode with tangible tips and takeaways and understand what it truly means to live an energized and optimized life. Hello, hello. We've got a good one today. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it direct. I feel like these have been the, not the easiest, it's not about me, but I feel like what we want is a tangible tip. We want application. We want to see how things are moving and shaking. Oh, well, here are all these tips, but how do I put them into play? That's that's what we're getting at lately. I hope you all liked the episode about zone two, which was the cardio episode. And if you immediately heard it or saw it and thought cardio, yep, no, not for me. Reassess. It is the best (laughs) decision fitness wise you will ever make aside from what we're going to talk about today. But as you know, we have a predominantly female audience and you and me, the girls, we're going to chat about how to construct a workout routine based on your cycle. We've touched on this a few different times, but it's always been sprinkled in with different topics or it's been within a conversation that it gets muddled. And I think that what we want to do today is bring as much clarity as possible to the cycle without getting too bogged down by the hormones of it all. Look, that's not my specialty. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an endocrinologist. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your hormones, but when I look back at downloads and I look back at episodes and what people have listened to the most, a lot of it is fitness and fat loss and movement, weightlifting, hit. And I think that all of that is super, super relevant. So getting into it from a perspective of when is the most optimal times to do certain workouts. And I think that a lot of people who listen to this podcast are within the age of either maybe they're off of birth control, they're on birth control, maybe they're not using it, or maybe they're just more in tune with, or they're wanting to get more in tune with their cycle, however that looks. But I do know that people who listen to this podcast and the women who who tune in weekly, y'all are, you're badass. And sometimes I get messages on Instagram from you all <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I've never heard of this. Or y'all educate me. Or you'll you'll remind me of something. Or you'll, you'll drop some brand or some, I don't know, some account that I've never heard of. And you're like, oh my gosh, you should have this person on the podcast. Or you should look at their information. And I appreciate that so much. Y'all are, y'all are 10 times smarter than me. I'm just here to ramble and hopefully get some shit organized enough that it helps. <laughs> In a way, in any way. Speaking of rambling, let's hop into it. Today we're going to be going over the, oh wait, before we do, housekeeping. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have not already gone onto Apple Podcasts and left a review, it is the greatest way to support the podcast and it takes about 10 seconds. Just say, hey, love this podcast, listen to it weekly, say whatever you want on Apple Podcasts, but if people are searching on iTunes for health podcasts, nutrition, wellness podcasts, that's one of the best ways for it to show hotter than health. And it would mean the world. Y'all are the best. And if you already have, thank you so, so much. It's definitely seen and definitely appreciated. But today we're going to be talking about how to assess your energy, the different cycle, different phases of your cycle. And even if you do not track your cycle on flow or whatever app you're on, even if you're not currently tracking your cycle, you may be able to tell what what cycle you're in just based on a few different symptoms. And we'll go over those things because I don't want it to seem like, oh, you have to be a mathematician tracking your basal body temperature. You have to be on all these apps just to know a little bit more about your body. So I'll be sprinkling in some different ways for us to be able to see what phase of our cycle we're on based on based on a few different symptoms. Let's start out fresh. We're starting out fresh. It's it's let's just say in a perfect world 
the calendar is reading 30 days. You got 30 days and everything is just going perfectly. We start with the follicular phase. The follicular phase is the phase that you are in right after your period. So I'm, I'm just going to start the phase there. Everyone starts it on the period, but I'm, I'm starting it after because we, we're starting fresh, tabula rasa, clean slate. I always think follicular, fresh, frolicking, follicular. And what is happening in the follicular phase is it is after your period and you are finally out of the dark night of winter that has been your period. For those who have tough periods, I understand you just want to get out of there. But typically on day three, usually you start to, towards the end of your period, get a little bit more of your natural energy. You're starting to feel more like yourself. You're not retaining as much water and you're starting to notice your energy come back. You are entering the follicular phase. This is hype. The follicular phase is fun because this is when we are noticing estrogen starting to rise. Uh, again, I'm not going to get bogged down too much in the hormones, but at high level here. Estrogen is starting to rise, which might promote a bit of energy. This is a great time in your cycle. Tame. This is a great time. <laughs> I just think of I love you, man. Slap in the bit. Maybe we'll do that tonight. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch that. But in the follicular phase, estrogen is starting to rise, energy is a bit higher, and this is a really great time of your cycle for HIT or any type of slightly higher intensity workouts. Maybe there are those workouts during the month that you are really working up towards. You're seeing these things on Instagram or TikToks. You're like, oh, I want to try that workout. Maybe you want to go and do a CrossFit class. Maybe you want to push the weight a little bit higher you're like trying to build an ass you know it's it's building season it's getting colder outside or if you're in the Australia it's getting warmer and you still want to build an ass and you're doing heavier glute bridges and you want to go higher rep higher weight or you want to do a burpee challenge maybe your gym is doing something with more high intensity this is a great time to do so it is a time when we can do higher intensity and higher volume. Uh, this is not saying don't warm up. You're going to be fine. Just just go for it. Slam it. We still want to focus on warm up. We still want to focus on, focus on cool down. But if you want to do some Tabatas, great days for sprints, great days for a CrossFit class, great day for maybe those 20-minute quick sweaty, shreddy workouts but these are the times in your cycle where your body is, some of your hormones that might cause low energy, they're lower. Take it as your advantage. Something I also noticed in the follicular phase is we aren't, and again, please take this with a grain of salt because, is it grand of salt? Grain of salt. Please take this with <laughs> caution and understanding that I am not giving medical advice here. This is just based on observation and my own personal research. In the follicular phase, I feel like we aren't as focused on food. For some reason, it's almost like our body is just in hyperdrive, energizer, bunny mode, and we're more focused on movement and doing things and being active and like tasks than we are focused on leth lethargy and food. And we're not I, it also probably has to do with the fact that we have natural energy, so we're not relying on a bunch of quick carbs or sugar to spike our blood sugar and keep us awake. You're not going to want to miss this. You've heard me talk about Organifi a hundred times, but if you've ever trusted me on a product, trust me on this one. Introducing Organifi's Shilajit Gummies. If you've never heard of Shilajit, it is a mineral resin and it's long been cherished by Ayurvedic and Eastern medicine practices for its healing properties. It's formed with plant material, rock minerals, organic substances, and it actually seeps from the cracks in the Himalayan rocks, which is pretty incredible. And it has a really wild story. It's black in nature, but if you've ever tried Shilajit or heard anything about it, you know that it has a funky flavor, not these. They have enhanced recovery. 
supports healthy muscles. It promotes collagen synthesis, which we all love for healthy hair, nails, all of that good stuff. It increases your heart health, increases cellular energy. It boosts testosterone levels and, of course, supports energy production and performance. For those who are listening, I know you all are into fitness and wellness and health. And if we can do anything to support our actual performance and not just our performance, but our cellular energy and our muscles enhance our recovery, why wouldn't we do this? The Sheila Jeet gummies are formulated with an easy, powerful substance and finished with a delicious flavor, making it easy and convenient for you to enjoy all of the benefits of Sheila Jeet. You can experience the Ayurvedic advantages today and get 25% off of these incredible gummies. I'm not sure how long these will be around. I feel like they're going to sell out. So make sure you're checking them out. Use the code HTH at Organifi.com and you can check out the Shilajit gummies today. You don't want to miss this one. Again, it is Organifi.com backslash HTH or Organifi.com. Use the code HTH and get your Shilajit on. That's my perspective. If there's any doctors or endocrinologists listening to this and thinking that I'm an absolute dingus, dingus, please let me know. I would love to hear it. Please call me out. Call into the hotline. We don't have one, but send me a message and I'll call myself out on the next episode. But I think that this is the follicular phase. As estrogen is rising, rising higher energy, great time for hit, high intensity. Get after it. Or, or if a day where you're like, oh, I don't have, I'm, I'm bored, I'm over my workouts, go try something new. This is the day where you can be a little bit more, okay, this is not a cop out, go do your workout, like you have the energy right now, use it. After this comes ovulation. Ovulation is not, it's a brief period of time. Uh, they say that, oh my God, again, <laughs> I'm going to get canceled for this saying this because they're going to be like, you're just spreading lies. I really don't know. But this is what I heard. I heard allegedly, allegedly, that sperm can live up in, in, in your body for up to five days. Meaning, meaning that there's an ovulation window that starts even before you actually ovulate. We cannot catch a break. Like, we can't truly. But ovulation is typically only a couple of days, or even for some people, it's only one day long. And this comes at the end of the follicular phase. The follicular phase, I want to say, is only about, I don't know, a week or two, a little less than two weeks. And then at the end of that, you have your ovulation phase. Ovulation, I'm going to call it, I mean, let's, let's call it an even three days because we're, it's a brief period of time. And here are some ways you might know if you're in that ovulatory phase. You are feeling, your skin is probably the clearest it's been throughout the month. Your hair is feeling good. You feel like you are, you, you are your most authentic self. You may feel like this is the time where you walk into the room and you're feeling confident or you're feeling social or flirty. This is that time when your body is naturally setting off these pheromones saying, hey, come come mate with me like it's giving off the vibes of it wants to be impregnated because you're about to drop an egg so it's your most fertile time so it's your it's natural tendency to do whatever it can to attract someone that can impregnate you because that's just what we came to earth to do apparently but we might have clearer skin better energy feeling more social you're feeling more confident at work you feel level-headed and like you have not a physical thick skin but you feel like you have a good backbone during this time confident and then of course if you're tracking your cycle you might notice it might tell you what days you're ovulating Um, again that's why I always talk about the basal body temperature in the ovulation phase you can typically kick it fitness wise the same way that you would in your follicular phase you're probably going to have still that energy you're going to feel light and like you want to work hard and you might be feeling like oh my god this is the start of my fitness journey I'm feeling amazing I am untouchable we feel great I have heard that this is a fantastic time to get into group activities so group fitness you could this is a great time to schedule a workout with a friend maybe you have a friend who's like wanting to get back into it or a friend that you see who's fit as hell 
and you think, okay, I, I want to go work out with this person. I promise you they will be so happy to hear from you. If you go say, hey, I've, I've been seeing you kill it. Or, or maybe you're feeling so social that you go meet a girl at the gym. Maybe you go to a gym in Charleston. You go to high low and you're like, damn, there's a girl in my class who I really want to work out with or a person in my class that I really want to work out with, but I'm intimidated. Use the ovulation phase as confidence. Go say, hey, can I work out next to you? Hey, how do you do this? Hey, whatever it is. This is a fantastic time to schedule something with a group or a friend or some type of fitness activity. Highly recommend. Also, you might notice if you're ovulating, this is another way to tell. Sometimes people can actually feel, and I can attest to this, it's a wild phenomenon. Sometimes you can actually tell, you almost feel like a burning in your in your lower belly, like your abdomen area, you might feel honestly where the ovulation is occurring. It is pretty crazy. And I might not be describing like that uh, it that well, but you got two ovaries and apparently an egg drops from one of them or both of them. I, I don't know, but it's, you can feel a, a almost like a hotness. <laughs> oh my God. Clearly. <laughs> just stop listening to this podcast. But you will also, you may notice if there is like mild cramping, some people cramp or spot around ovulation. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your period's coming super early. I don't really necessarily know what it means, but since you are, your body's going through some stuff, it's about to drop an egg. There's movement down there. It's not super shocking that there may be some type of sensation, whether it's cramping or spotting, but that's ovulation. Ovulation is fun, guys. Have safe sex and have intense workouts. Luteal phase. The luteal phase comes after ovulation and the luteal phase is apparently the longest phase of your cycle going up approximately two weeks. And you might not even notice that you're in the luteal phase because a lot of people might say, oh, yeah, I'm in the luteal phase. Can't work out. Oh, luteal phase, luteal phase. Ba- Ooh. And trust me, I have been there. I've been like, oh, would you look at that luteal day? Uh, like day one of my luteal phase when technically I'm still probably in that ovulatory phase and I'm just being a lazy, just lazy. The luteal phase is about two weeks and it's when you have slightly increased progesterone levels, which sometimes towards the second half of that luteal phase and the second half of those two weeks can make you feel a bit more lethargic. And that could mean a little bit more fatigue. It might mean that you need to sleep a little bit more. Rising progesterone, if again, you're not tracking your cycle, here's a way to tell, okay, maybe you're in that luteal phase. Maybe you know you're about a week out from your period and you're doing a workout and you're thinking, oh my God, I did the same workout the other week or I did something similar and it was so much easier and you feel almost like you're losing muscle or you're losing endurance, you're, you're losing it, oh my gosh, my gains. You aren't. Your body is going to fatigue a little bit faster. Uh, you might also notice cravings change. And with that, you may notice that you are hungrier more often, and that is due to an increase in progesterone. Sometimes it can affect your metabolism. Based on my research, and also we've heard this before, we're like, oh, we're a week out from our period. We're just craving all this stuff. It's not a, you're not crazy. You're, you may actually be experiencing a higher metabolism, which means continue to have your balanced meals. It doesn't mean we need to just cop out and say, oh, 10 bars of chocolate. Like, do what do what feels good, but nourish yourself, especially because your body is fatigued and you want to make sure that you're, you're doing, you're going to set it up for proper recovery and rest instead of just flooding it with every nasty, or every like every last whim. During the luteal phase, this is a time in the beginning, back to workouts, in the beginning of the luteal phase in that first week or a little or over a week after ovulation it's a great time to basically stick with what you were doing in ovulation and follicular there's not a huge difference in that first week uh, but this is around the time where i would say 
pr- begin prioritizing warm ups and begin e- prioritizing your cool down and stretching even more. This is something I'm very guilty of. I feel like I'll get a good workout in and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm just like sitting at my desk or sitting at a coffee shop all day working. So I, I bypass some of the stretching and I need to get better about that. Holding holding myself accountable. Um, even got a new little journal to have an accountability partner for these things. I'm setting a goal. Five minutes a day stretching. Nothing crazy. If I do something more than that, then I'll then I likely won't do it. But the luteal phase is in the beginning, likely not going to feel too much of a difference, but towards the end, really uh, the second half, really start to prioritize stretching and really start to prioritize warming up. Because during this phase, certain, certain hormones are produced that make your muscles and bones more susceptible to like movement and elasticity, meaning you may be more susceptible to injury during this time. Uh, Not elasticity, that's not the word, but there, there are hormones that are produced that could make joints stretch further than they naturally should or muscles stretch more than they naturally should. I don't know if it's muscles. Again, I need to do more research on that or feel free to do your own and then let me know. Send me a DM. But if you continue to like do snatches and crazy deadlifts and the exact same weight you were doing during the follicular phase, you might absolutely be totally fine. But if you're feeling that lack of energy, you feel like you're you're pushing yourself too hard and you're like, this feels aggressively hard, harder than it was even a week ago back off on the weight, back off on the reps, maybe take longer between sets and and truly just focus on warm up and recovery. Have have your intense workout if you want to, but I would encourage you to simply be more aware of how you're feeling on those days. If you walk into the gym and you feel like everything is tight or you feel like you just can't get warmed up or or you're in a, a shit mood, to be honest, then take it a little bit easier on the weights. You might even be feeling low self-confidence during that luteal phase. It's like getting towards the the fall, winter of your cycle. You might be feeling a little bit low energy mentally and emotionally. Going a little lower in weight or lower in rep, maybe you take out jumps if you're doing jumps. It can also help to increase your confidence during that workout. You're like, okay, well, I finished that set. wasn't so bad. And then if you want to increase the weight, go for it. Or if you want to hold do a slower tempo so that you feel it more like add a band do something a little bit more intense but do something to get your confidence up if you're walking in with that low low mood because pmsing is real (laughs) y'all that's so annoying i'm saying that to people who understand this but we know pmsing is real you don't have to lean into it but you also there are ways where you can tick off a little bit of a confidence notch in your workout so that you're not always feeling that that sense of depletion. This takes us all the way up into the menstrual phase. Menstrual, for some people, it's three days. Lucky sons of bitches. For some people, it's five or six days, depending on if you're on birth control, maybe you have no period at all. But you can still sometimes notice symptoms of when it would be. Uh, Maybe you're still a little crampy or maybe you get some PMS symptoms. But if you do know this is happening, clearly we understand that (laughs) you bleed during this phase of your cycle. And the first few days, again, we are noticing increase in hormones. We're a little more tired. I actually interestingly just heard that during the first couple days of your period is actually a really good time to fast. I need to do more research on that. We're going to have someone on to talk about female fasting, but... Uh, I I want to I want to get more into that uh, fasting f- for women, but in the menstrual phase for the first day or two, this is a this is a great time to still you're not gonna like it. Stay consistent with your workouts, and I'm not saying that because for like fat loss or bloating reasons, but when you have your body going through something where it's releasing so much from an energetic standpoint, from a a physical standpoint, 
you do want to make sure that you're doing something to like move the blood and the lymph system around. Simply laying there on your couch or sitting at your desk all day and then as soon as you're done at your desk going straight to your couch, maybe you walk for five minutes, I would challenge you to still get in 30 minutes of movement, whether it's just a walk or whether it's a big deep stretch you can still do something and I can almost guarantee if it's not, if it's light, if it's light impact during this phase of your cycle for the first couple of days, you will not regret doing it. You're not going to injure your, uh, you hopefully won't injure yourself unless you like fall and twist your ankle. But because look, some of us are athletic, but not coordinated and she is me, but hopefully you won't get injured during this light to moderate movement and then again, it helps with the confidence. If we're feeling low, PMSE, this is a great way to feel good about yourself and do something for yourself. That's during the first couple of days. Once you're past day three or so of your period, I really, based on personal experience, unless you are struggling with endometriosis or PCOS, something that can contribute to more intense periods and maybe they're longer or heavier or you have worse PMS, even if that's the case, I would still say stretch, get on the ground and like open up your hips and do some down dog and up dog, loosen some things up so that you're not sitting in stagnant. We see stagnant water and we see film start to, to pull over it. We see stagnant energy and it ends up being a, a more negative or dense. And that's not what we want. We want to move things around, keep the air flow, the blood flow and the lymph going during the menstrual phase. Here are some key takeaways. Focus on, no matter what phase of the cycle you're in, focus on your warm-up and recovery, but focus on your warm-up and recovery extra in days that you know that you might be in the luteal phase or the menstrual phase, particularly the second part of the luteal phase or the menstrual phase. Excuse me. That's a key takeaway. Assess your energy. This doesn't need to be oh, I'm in the luteal or menstrual phase, cop out, I'm not going to move. It also doesn't mean that you have to have just a blast, a workout if you're in the follicular phase or your ovulatory phase. If you're feeling really good on the second half of your menstrual or luteal phase or your menstrual cycle, then by all means, go crush your workout. But again, prioritize that warm up, prioritize the cool down and stretching. Tracking and adjusting your workout to your cycle, it can definitely be influential in progress, uh, in progressing your, your workouts, especially if you're like training for something in particular, or if you have incredibly intense workouts and you're really focused on increasing your weights or your reps and, and progressing in that way. But if you aren't tracking, you're not really worried about it. You don't really notice any PMS symptoms. You don't really notice any changes at all towards your body when you're, when you're in your menstrual phase. Then by all means, skip, skip tracking this. You don't need to do that. But I do think that the, the female body changes so often. We, based on lifestyle, cho- uh, based on lifestyle influences, medic- medicine, Maybe you're pregnant. Maybe you're trying to get pregnant. Maybe you're on and off birth control. Like the female body goes through so many changes that if you have the opportunity to start to understand some of the things that are going on and some of the, some of the, the tells essentially, some of the symptoms. And if you start to understand what those look like, then you'll be able to understand what you can do to support them and not make it harder on yourself and sometimes even make it easier on yourself. Isn't that the same thing? Anyways. And then last key takeaway, if you consist, and this is a big one, big key takeaway. If you are consistently getting regular sleep and you fuel your body properly, then you may not really need to adjust any of this, but you may simply just go based on how you're feeling. If you have consistent rest and sleep and fuel and lifestyle on a day-to-day basis, obviously there's going to be fluctuation in travel and kids and work, but if it's essentially the same, then you may simply be able to wake up in the morning and say, okay, how am I really feeling? 
And if you're really feeling like you just got hit by a Mack truck, no matter what phase of your cycle, maybe that's just a day where you do something more lightweight. And if you wake up and you're still feeling tired, but you're like, okay, well, I could still, I could still go do this. I'm, I'm just, everyone's tired when they wake up, let's be honest. But if you feel like, okay, I had, you know, my morning conference call, I had my greens juice, I'm feeling good. I can go do a noon workout, then, then by all means do it. But instead of using it as a crutch to say, okay, well, I'm in this phase, I'm not going to work out, or using it as something that is forcing you into an intense workout, simply adjust based on how you're feeling. And I can guarantee you will become a more consistent, you will become more consistent in the gym, you will become more confident in any style of movement that you select, simply because the consistency will lead to that confidence. I'm a firm believer that the more you can make a commitment to yourself and then have that follow through in the gym, with your sleep, with your recovery, with your stretching, if you have that consistency, then the confidence will come and then the progress is really, really starting to become evident. I hope this was helpful. I think that sometimes we need to dumb it. I'm sorry, dumb it down. That's no, I I think sometimes we need a higher level of understanding instead of, uh, I listen to so many podcasts and I get, I get bogged down with the hormones. Cause I'm like, Oh wait, did he say estrogen? Did he say progesterone? Was he talking about thyroid? Was he talking about these things? And there are so many nuances to health, so many new discoveries all the time. But If we can have some way of having just a human being like myself who has interest in and some credibility in fitness and health and nutrition to talk about personal experience and and what we've learned, by all means, let's have a conversation about it. That's what we wanted to get out on today's episode. I hope you loved it. If you did and you thought this was valuable in any way, please share it on your social media. It's one of the best ways alongside leaving a review, but feel free to share it on social media, take a screenshot, click share, however you're listening to it. And I'm very excited for this episode because it's only 34 minutes and that's the perfect time for somebody to go for a walk. Share this with a friend, tell them to go for a walk and listen to this episode. Maybe they struggle with periods. Maybe they struggle with PMS. Maybe they just want to get back into the gym or they're interested and they track their cycle. Send it over. All right. I appreciate you all, and if you are listening, know that you're the shit, and I hope you message me on Instagram. All right, have an amazing week, and I will talk to you next Thursday. Yeah.